Hi, I'm Peter Klossom from bugsandcyberspace.com. I've had my website up for 25 years, and I started a new business in 2022 called Sky Island Adventures, where we get you out into the field from our guest house based in Sonoya, Arizona, in the middle of all the Sky Islands, to see the greatest bugs in the country. In today's video, we're going to take a look at jumping spiders, the most feared spider of all, because they jump. For many people, they are considered terrifying, but... They are also the gateway spider for many other people who find them to be cute teddy bears and countless social media videos have been made about just how cute they are with all their human-like qualities, their sense of vision, and the way they interact with the world. We can all relate to them in one form or another. I put some music to the back of some of the clips here and that really sort of lends a different feeling to each clip sort of accentuates some of the things that other people see in these spiders, which may or may not really be the case. One of the main points of this video is to demonstrate how I care for the hatchling spiderlings, also called slings. If you have any questions about any of that, please let me know in the comments below. We also show breeding and then just tons of other clips of them that I've made over the years through my social media accounts. Thank you for watching. Cause we want retribution Oh yeah we want retribution Oh yeah we want retribution This is Phidippus johnsony, Johnson's jumping spider. Beautiful with its red and black markings. You can see the silk drag lines streaming through the air, perhaps. They use that as a tether, as a sort of safety line if they should fall.
about his big issue was in terms of mass. So here, at the top of this 32 ounce cup, you can see the female's original nest there. She was over on this side, but when she went to deposit her egg sac, she did it on the opposite side. You can see her a little bit through this side of the cup. But more interestingly, the light over on the opposite side, you can see that her egg sac has hatched now. You can see mother still there guarding them. Every once in a while, the female will die and it's possible that the babies will feed on her a little bit. Not real sure on that, but sometimes she won't come out to eat or she'll have nothing left in her reserves and maybe not have the energy to come out. We've got a Phidippus carneus in here mother. I just kind of tapped the babies down just a few moments ago. Probably 50 of them in there. I don't know, maybe 60. And we found this female, I think probably here in the yard, Sonoida, Arizona, about, I don't know, maybe four months ago. And we could tell that she was gravid, and so we put her in a cup like we normally do, a cup that looks like this. This is from a paper towel roll. Just cut it in here. It's a 32 ounce cup. And pop a lid on there. And now it's time to extract mother from the container and move her into this other container here. I definitely want the babies not to come out. It becomes a little bit more difficult. Get mom over here. There she goes. I'm going to put her back in there. And then, now that we have the babies in here, take a look at how she constructed her egg sac down in this right here. I'm going to gently shake this here. They have their drag lines, and so they will drop down using those drag lines. I'll double check this in a few moments to make sure that it doesn't have any other babies on it, but she had deposited her egg. Her egg sac. Let's get this in focus here. She had deposited her egg sac there, and uh, you can actually see that there are a few uh, a few babies moving around down there still. We'll pull them out separately, but uh, give them a little tap here again, and uh, then I'm going to drop this in there. Gonna ball it up here just a little tighter so that we don't squish any of the babies against the side. Should be fine like that. Going to give it a little bit of a mist in there. They should be happy in there. And then I've got this special lid that I use for the jumping spiders. I'm able to put a funnel through there and then feed them with fruit flies in that fashion. Very simple. I'll do a feeding demonstration here in a moment. So we've got our mother in here now, a new container. She may deposit another sack. And then we've got our babies in here who will be feeding on fruit flies. It is my experience that they're not going to feed on each other at all through the first molt or probably two. And especially if we're dumping lots and lots of fruit flies in. In a container this size, their food will be very close to them. Many people will separate them at this point, but it just ends up being a lot more work. And I've found that this is much more effective for me in managing the large numbers of jumping spiders and really animals in general that we provide care for here. So this is my personal favorite technique for managing them. And then once they've molted probably two times, we separate them into smaller cups like like this orchid mantis right here. We'll put them in little cups, two ounce cups this size, and with a little bit of paper towel generally and some coconut fiber down on the bottom. 
and then we'll individually feed them fruit flies until we're ready to send them off to our customers. Popped out my sponge from the lid of the new sling or baby jumping spider spiderlings container. Got some Drosophila melanogaster fruit flies here. Smallest available species in the hobby as far as I know. They are wingless. This is a newer culture. It is actually ideal to have an older culture because as they use up the media down here and as the life of the culture is extended, they get smaller and smaller, the adults, because there's not as much food or it gets a little bit dry or whatever the reason, older cultures produce smaller flies. So these ones are a little larger, but these jumping spiders are just fine. We're gonna tap this culture down, knock down the fruit flies to the bottom so that I can open it. They are genetically engineered to be wingless. And so it's very easy for me to just tip them over here and tap in some of the flies, get a good number of them in there. And every once in a while, you'll drop a fly back here behind. You can just pick it up like that. Here's another one right here. They'll just grab onto you. Tap the funnel back and forth. Pop the little cork back in. I gave it a little mist earlier. The baby jumping spiders do like to drink little droplets of water. You don't want the droplets to be so big that they can get stuck through molecular adhesion uh, through the surface tension in the water droplets. So a fine mist is ideal. I've got this spray bottle here I've had forever. Um, it, it drips like crazy as you can see, but I just, I just love this one. Um, Usually I'm spraying over something anyway, and so, so the water falls in, but um, I probably should invest the $1.37 to get a new one. Uh, <laughs> what the heck? Anyway, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to feed these guys every couple of days, and they will grow and grow and molt and grow and grow and molt again, and then we will separate them. We've got lots and lots of happy baby jumping spiders in here. I'll take a video in a few moments. Once the first one catches its prey, has its first meal. These just hatched out about a week ago. I put off removing the mother because I wanted to make this video to show you guys. But generally, once the spiderlings emerge from the egg sac, um, and these ones have molted that first time, they're not EWLs anymore or eggs with legs. And so they are ready to hunt and be on their own and uh, removing the mother from the tank will ensure that she's happy and gets to feed and that she won't consume any of her young, which seems to happen sometimes. These slings won't bother each other for quite some time. Not worried at all about them preying on each other. The fruit flies will be a much more suitable and interesting and appropriately sized prey item for them than each other through at least the first couple molts in my experience. So you can see some of the fruit flies and the spiderlings up there right where the container base meets the lid. And it's for that reason that I specifically like using this sponge here in the middle to pop the funnel in and feed the fruit flies through. Opening and closing this lid could result in some of the little slings being squished. Looks like that one's outside of the cup, but it's actually on the inside. Don't want little squished babies for sure. And the fruit flies fortunately like to hang out in that same place that the spiders do. And so it makes it pretty convenient for the little slings. Let's see if We've got one there. I think we got a sling that, yep, there it is. Feeding on a fruit fly. You can see that the body of the fruit fly is probably, it probably exceeds the mass of the little spiderling itself, but um, that's how it's done right there. There's another one nearby kind of watching. Sometimes they will share. Not really a danger to each other in those times. There are plenty of flies in there as well for them to each have their own, but sometimes the sharing is very helpful because, believe it or not, some 
are more or less suited, adept, um, large enough, agile enough, strong enough, whatever the word you want to use is, to capture food. Others are not. And so through sharing, it's actually of benefit to all of them. So the first one has eaten. There may be a few other ones there. This product in the middle, by the way, is called Excelsior or Wood Wolf. And basically what it does there in the cage is it increases surface area. It allows the spiders to sort of get away from each other, have their own little individual spaces where they can just sort of exist and hunt. And the fruit flies, of course, are used to that also. It's the same product we use in the fruit fly cultures. And so they'll crawl around on it and the spiders will chase their prey down to some extent, but are also opportunistic feeders in that there. They will generally wait for their prey to come near them before they expend any energy pouncing on it. 